Today, we're going to be on Mark 8. Today, we're going to take a little detour from Acts. And we've been on Acts for, if I'm not mistaken, like a year and a half-ish. Going good. Five more chapters, and if I'm not mistaken, and we'll be done with Acts. Another half a year, and we'll be done. Nah. But uh, today, we're going to be in Mark 8, verses 34 through 38. And the name of this one is The Cost of True Discipleship. So you, you'll see that as we're going through it. The cost of true, of the, excuse me, the cost of true discipleship. Of what it really means of being a true Christian, true Christian and a true child of God. You're going to see it today as we go through this text. If y'all want to stand for the reading of the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Mark 8, 34 through, 34 through 38, excuse me. I'm oh, tongue twisted. Start off in verse 34 in Jesus' name. And he summoned the crowd with the disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 35. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. 36. For what does it profit a man? To gain the whole world and forfeit his soul. 37. For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is a reading of the word of God. Let's go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, by the powerful, holy, and righteous name of your Son, Jesus, Father God, that you speak through me today, Heavenly Father, that you have your way with us today, Father God, that your word will go forth, Father God, no, never return back void, Father God, you penetrate areas in our hearts, Father God, where we need to grow, Father God, where we need to be convicted, Father God, where things need to fall off, Lord Jesus, that you open up the eyes of people that don't see, Father God, of people that don't see. Open up their eyes. Just like Elijah prayed for a servant's eyes to be opened. Father God, I'm praying for people's eyes that are blind for them to see. To see you and who you are and what you've done for us. I thank you for everything that you're going to do. I pray that the way that we walked in today, we'll leave, we'll leave different today. Have your way with us, Lord Jesus. Protect me from error. I mean behind the cross of Christ. Lead us, direct us, and guide us by thy word. That word is true. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all may be seated, brothers and sisters. Man, I studied this text for quite some time. This is one of the most important passages in Scripture. Brothers and sisters, I want y'all to know that. This is one of the most important passages in Scripture. That tells us the meaning of the Christian life in discipleship. That's what you're going to see through this text today. This is like the crown jewel. And the gospel is in three gospels, if I'm not mistaken. Three gospels. And the way Jesus has set it up when he gets to this part. It's like he laid the groundwork to get to this part right here where we're going to be at. I love it. I'm going to read some of these, these right here. If you see in just a few verses up ahead on Mark 27 through 29, look at this. Look what he had just told his disciples. Look at this. Jesus went out along with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he questioned his disciples, saying to them, who do people say that I am? 
they told him, saying, John the Baptist. And others say, Elijah. But others, one of the prophets. And he continued by questioning them. But who do you say I am? Peter answered and said to him, you are the Christ. Peter told him, you are the Christ. Look at this. If you don't want to go there, write it down. Turn to Matthew 16, just real briefly. Look at this. You're going to see where we're going with this. Matthew 16. 13 on. Look how beautiful this is. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Can you imagine that they're walking along? They had already been seeing Jesus do miracles. Can you imagine that? And they're walking along with Jesus. And the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 1, they go into the temple. Jesus starts preaching, right? I'm going to break this down to y'all. Jesus starts preaching, and the Bible says on Mark chapter 1 that he was preaching quite unlike, the, quite unlike the teachers of the religious law. And right when he started preaching, a demon starts yelling in the synagogue, and Jesus hushes them up and rebukes them, casts them out of that man, right? That's in chapter 1. As you can see, course, I mean, excuse me, as you start seeing verse 2, I mean, excuse me, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, all the way to chapter 8, right? He's casting out demons. Chapter 5, cast out the demon uh, that's known as Legion. Starts casting out all these things. So these disciples were seeing Jesus do mighty works. Mighty works. I want you to know this. One of the first testimonies. One of the first testimonies of Jesus in the Bible was by a demon. The demons knew exactly who he was. Whenever he cast that demon out, Mark chapter 1, y'all pay attention to this. Y'all check this out. He cast that, the demon started screeching and screaming. You know why? Because they know what's wrong. They know what's going to happen to them. You know, you know what the demon was saying? Paraphrasing it. Why have you come to destroy us? Son of man, I know who you are. They're always screaming when Jesus just hops up on the scene. Because they, they already know what's going to happen to them. Jesus casts them out. Right? Jesus never shows no fear and casts them out. Right? And the demons are screaming, why have you come to destroy us before our time? Son of man, I know who you are. You're, son of, you're the son of the most high God. Remember Mark chapter 5? That demon runs and bows to him and says, I know who you are, son of the most high God. Can you imagine what that looked like on that shoreline? When, when the, when the, in the Bible, whenever you see the word legion, when they told you back in that day that a Roman legion was coming after you, that was about decimated, about 2,000 people coming after you. So can you imagine when every Jesus told them, what is your name? And that demon says, for we are a legion, for we are many in them. Can you, imagine, can you imagine what that looked like in the spiritual? How many demons were bound on that shoreline, shoreline to Jesus Christ? Check this out. So the point I'm making here is the demons knew who Jesus was. Excuse me, they know who Jesus is. The demons know who Jesus is. Look right here. Matthew 16, 13 on. Look what happens here. Look at this. Now, when Jesus came up to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he's walking with them, right? He was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Stop right there. Can you imagine them walking? They already seen all these miracles, right? And Jesus just straight up just looks at them and says, who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do people say the Son of Man is? And look what they say. 14. And they said, some say John the Baptist. And others, Elijah. But still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Stop right there again. They're tying Jesus, God in the flesh, to a sinful human being. Say, oh, like John the Baptist. Some people say that he's Elijah or one of the other prophets. Can you imagine that? He don't even rebuke him right then and there. He says, who do, who do, people, who do people say the Son of Man is? <clears throat> then look what he says. Look at this. 
15. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Stop right there again. Can you imagine Jesus saying, he hears them, okay. Some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah, some say one of the prophets, John the Baptist, huh? And then he says, but who do you say that I am? That's what I'm asking you today, brothers and sisters. Who do you say that Jesus is in your life? In your life. Not what other people say about Jesus. If you go and ask the road about Jesus, they're going to tell you about a Jesus that's not of this Jesus. That's not from here. Can you imagine Jesus looking at you and say, after you've seen all the miracles, just like they saw. They saw all the miracles. And Jesus looking at you and say, who do you say the son of man is? Who do you say the son of man is? Who do you say Jesus is? Who is he in your life? Who is he in your life? You ask yourself that today. You be your judge today. Because look what he says. 15 again. But he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Like I asked you, who do you say that he is? Look what happened. 16. Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Look what, look, look what Jesus says. 17. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. My father who is in heaven. He tells Simon. Blessed are you. Nobody told you that Simon. You did not learn that from anybody Simon. The only reason you know that is because God opened up your mind. And let you know that I'm his son. That I'm God in the flesh. He says, Blessed are you Simon of John. He said. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. My father in heaven did. If you know Jesus today, it's not because of flesh and blood. It's because there's a God in heaven that has opened up your mind, opened up and cleansed your eyes, took up the skills of your eyes, that you're able to see the glorious light of the gospel through Jesus Christ. Just like Simon said, you're the Christ. The son of God. Look at when you see through here. So the reason I was making that point is the demons knew who Jesus was. Check this out. Right there, they're barely claiming. You're the son of God. The, they were hanging around Jesus, not even knowing he was the Christ. The demons knew before he, they did. So check this out. So after this, look at, go down to 34. I'm going to start off with this. The cost of true discipleship. There's one command and four motives. Four motivations, brothers and sisters, to do something. So as I'm going through this, don't miss how very important how massively important these four structured motivations are that we're about to go through. Don't miss how important they are. Look at this. Don't ever think that Jesus says, that Jesus will tell you in your life, just do it just to do it. Like if Jesus is really telling you, just follow me, just to follow me. Like he says, here, follow me, right? Just deny yourself just because I told you to deny yourself. Just pick up your cross, just to pick up your cross, just do it because I told you to do it. Jesus don't ever talk like that. He don't ever talk like that. Jesus never talks like that. Jesus never wants us to obey just because he has all the authority. He wants you. You know why? He wants you to see the reason why he commands you to do these things. He wants you to see why he commands you to do these things, brothers and sisters. Unbelievers, he wants you to see why. He wants you to see how very important they are. Jesus isn't just going to command you to do something just to do it. He wants you to see the reason. Why do you think? In other scriptures, he tells you to count the cost. To count the cost of being a follower of Jesus Christ. Ask yourself that. Let's just start off there. Have you counted the cost? And we're about to... Go into what it's going to cost you. 
and what it has cost you if you're a believer in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, look at this. You'll see how very serious Jesus' commands are if you have taken his invitation. If you have taken his invitation, you see how very serious these commands are that he tells us that it's going to be in a believer's life. How very serious they are. And you're going to see that. Go to verse 34. We're going to break these few verses down. 34. Look at this. And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must, what? Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Three things. Three things. But look at this. And y'all's translation might be different. I'm, I'm reading out of the NASB. Y'all pay attention to this. Verse 34, I'm just going to read. I mean, verse 35, look at the four fours. 36, I mean, uh, excuse me, 35. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Jump to 36. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? 37. Look at it again. He always uses the word for. For what will it, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? 38. For what? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father and with the holy angels. If anyone wants to follow Jesus, he says right here, follow me this way. What way? Why would Jesus say, follow me? Pretty much, follow me this way. This way. What's, what are the ways? Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Check this out. He hadn't even, he hadn't even told him that he was going to die on the cross yet. He told him that he was going to die, but not on a cross. Look at this. Let's start with, let's start here. Let's start with the cross. Take up your cross. Let's jump there. It's not like nowadays that the cross today has been cleansed. Have you noticed that? Like nowadays, brothers and sisters, when you see a cross, I have plenty of crosses in my house. I'm not trying to take away from that. I want to break this down to you. Let's just be real with it, right? How the cross nowadays, you see it in houses, right? You see it on necklaces. Praise God, right? You see it on necklaces, but how they look all nice and shiny, right? How do you think it would look if you had a picture, I mean, like a, a necklace with an electric chair on there? Or a necklace that had a, a guy hanging off of a, 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 a noose? How would that look? You know why? I'm not telling you just to, for this to be, I want you to get this mental picture in your head. Look at this. Because back in that day, in that time, in that age, when Jesus told them, pick up your cross and follow me. Pick up your cross. They knew the horrors of the Roman cross. They knew what the cross was. They knew what it was. They knew what it was. Trust me, in that day, they didn't have crosses in the houses. They didn't have Roman crosses in the houses. They did it. When people were talking about the Roman cross, they, it was fear. It brought fear. It was an instrument of death and torture. That's what the Roman cross was made for. It was made for torture, resulting in death. It wasn't made for anything else. I don't even, I don't think in ever in history, anybody that was on a cross survived. Except Jesus Christ, because he came back. But he died on that cross. But I don't think everybody in history was like, man, I remember one day I was on that cross, and I'm alive now. I, I, I conquered the cross. You're out of your mind. The Romans made sure you were dead. You know what happened back in that day? When you were hanging there, naked, beaten to a pulp, shamed in front of everybody, can you imagine that? 
in front of everybody. Not only that, you they made you carry your own cross. After they beat you to a pole, you had to carry it. You had to carry it to where they were going to kill you. Can you imagine that? They knew what it was. So can you imagine how they felt when Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me? Can you imagine them thinking like, what? Like, you're the Messiah. Like, didn't you come to save us? Aren't you going to, like, take over the Romans and, like, fix everything that's been all messed up? Jesus said, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross. Pick up your cross. Look at this. It was shameful. It involved unspeakable suffering that led to death. It was an instrument of death. So ask yourself, are you willing to endure official opposition? Are you willing to be opposed? Look at this. Are you willing to be shamed? Are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to die? That's what happened in those days when you picked up your cross. You were opposed by everybody. Total opposition. You were shamed. Naked. Can you imagine beaten to a pope? Not only beaten, now you're naked. And now you're carrying a cross. You can't even cover your nakedness. Can you imagine that? How ruthless this was? You were shamed. Are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to die? Ask yourself, because that, that's what it means to take up your cross, brothers, sisters, and friends. That's what I'm telling you all today. That's what the Lord is saying through this scripture. That's what it means to take up your cross. It means these things. When you take up your cross and follow Jesus, it means, again, total opposition. You're going to be opposed. It means you're going to be shamed by the world. It means you're going to suffer. And it means you're going to die. There's nothing more that the cross did in those days. Whenever people talked about the Roman cross in those days, they knew that it brought those things. That you would be opposed by everybody, totally opposed. Total opposition, right? It meant that you were going to suffer. It meant that you were going to be shamed. And it meant that you were going to die. That's what it meant. When you were on a cross, a Roman cross in those days, as a criminal, when they put criminals on the Roman cross, and you were hanging there. And when you were on a cross, they hung you on a cross. They beat you first, right? They made you carry your cross. And when you're on that cross, you would die of suffocation because you couldn't breathe. After a while, you'd be trying to breathe and you couldn't breathe. So you know what they would do to hasten your death, to make it faster? You know what they would do? They would come and break your knees. They will break your legs. You know why they will break your legs? So you wouldn't be able to pick up your legs and catch another breath. They will break your legs so you could just be hanging and die of suffocation. And, and then for them to make sure you were dead, they would grab a Roman spear and stab you to make sure you were dead. That's what they would do. Now Jesus is telling his disciples, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Can you imagine what they thought? Like, what? What? Can you imagine that? That's why Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, follow me this way. This way. But you know what the road will tell you? The road will tell you, you can follow Jesus this way. You don't have to do all that. Jesus did it for us. He paid for our sins. So we can be free. Free to do what? Free to sin? The Bible says whoever sin, whoever the sin is free is free indeed. Right? So if God died 
God in the flesh came to this world to live a sinless life that we couldn't live, to die for us and pay the fee that we couldn't pay, that we should pay in hell for all eternity. I like to conquer sin and death so that you can be set free in Christ Jesus and live a different life so you can be reborn. And then for somebody to say, Jesus did it for us. I can live how I want. I don't have to listen to nobody. I'm telling nobody anything. I'm going to do what I want to do. Jesus is love. Now, what would Jesus say? If you want to follow me, follow me this way. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. Why would he say that? Why would he say, follow me this way? But the road had to twist it. The road will tell you, Jesus died. Jesus died. Jesus did for it all. You can live how you want. Jesus is just so beautiful. He did that so I can live how I want to live. No. If the Bible says, whoever the son says free is free indeed. Then why does it look like in the world, when I talk to some Christians in the road, it looks like they're still in bondage. It don't look like they're free. It looks like they're still slaves of sin. The Bible says, not me. I'm blaming it on God. The Bible says you're a slave to whatever controls you. Ask yourself, brother and sister, unbeliever, whoever will be hearing this later on in life, the word of the Lord will go forth. It will never come back void. Ask yourself this. Who is he? Who is he in your life? Is he just a, a carry on? He says, follow me this way. This way. What way again? I want to keep pressing on it. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. When the world tells you, you can follow him this way. You can do it this way. No, 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 no. No, you can't. You can do that, but don't say that you're a follower of Christ. Because this is right here. This is like the crown jewel of Christianity, of what God tells you what it's going to be for you. That's why he says count the cost. Why would he say count the cost if it wasn't going to cost you nothing? So check this out. The Bible says you're a slave to whatever controls you. Really apply this to yourself. Brother, sister, friend, unbeliever. You don't have to be an unbeliever. You don't have to be. But the Bible says this. You're a slave to whatever controls you. Really check this out. Y'all apply this to yourself. This applies to me. This applies to everybody. The Bible says you're a slave to whatever controls you. What controls you? Be real with yourself. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Friends, unbelievers, be real with yourself. Just be real with yourself. What controls you? Because you know why? You're a slave to it. Whatever is controlling you, you're a slave to it. Let this sink in. I'm not saying it to be ugly. The Bible says that. I'm saying it because it's true. Whatever is controlling you, you and your life and how you live for Jesus, and it doesn't look like what Jesus says, what it's going to look like, you're a slave to it. That thing, whatever it is, lust, sexual morality, drugs, beer, you fill in the blank, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, you fill in the blank. Whatever that is, that is your master. But check this out, saint of God, child of God, believer. If Jesus controls you, that is your master. That is, he is your master. But be real with yourself. Look at this. So that's what the cross meant back in that day. It's not like today, like how you put the cross in your house and can you imagine that day when you, you came into somebody's house to go have fellowship with them? Hey, brother, how are you doing? And they had a cross in there with blood all over it. Like, hey, look at my new cross wall. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. Can you imagine that? I can imagine this. Hey, brother, they're like, <gasps> they were like, they were afraid of the Roman cross. They knew what it was. It wasn't like, oh, would you happen to have a little trinket of one of those so I could take with me? It wasn't that. It wasn't that. We have sanitized it today. We made it shiny. 
I'm saying there's nothing wrong with wearing crosses. Man, I have many of them. There's nothing wrong with the cross wall, but I'm saying don't forget what happened on that cross and what the cross brought. The cross brought total opposition. It brought shame. It brought death. It brought suffering. That's what the cross brings. Now, Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. Follow me this way. Look at this. When you spoke about the cross, like I said, in that time, in that age, people knew what it meant. People knew what, what, it, what the criminals being crucified, they knew what was going to happen to them. People knew the horrors of the Roman cross. When Jesus says, follow me, he is saying, follow me this way. Why this way? Verse 34. He summoned the crowd with disciples and said to them, if anyone wishes to come after me. So he says, if anyone wishes to come after me, he says, okay, I want to follow you, Jesus. Okay, these are the requirements right here. Do it this way. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must, it says, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Follow me. Look at this. You know why he says this way? Because you know why? If you're not willing to be shamed, if you're not willing to be opposed, if you're not willing to suffer, if you're not willing to die, check this out. If you're not willing to do all those things, can you imagine Jesus saying, if you just want to come and play games with me? Can you imagine Jesus saying that? If you want to just come and play games with me, follow someone else. Follow someone else. Because if, But if you want to follow me and you wish to come after me, deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. Can you imagine that? He said, you want to follow me? You got to do it this way. This way right here. No, no Christian is getting out of it. Look at this. That's what he says. Notice 35. Notice verse 35. Look at this. Mark 8, 35. Four. Look at this. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Imagine this. If you're not willing to be shamed and opposed and suffer and die, can you imagine Jesus telling you that? And go follow someone else. Look at this. This is just not any kind of suffering, brothers and sisters. It's not any kind of opposition. It's not any kind of shame. And it's not just any kind of death. It's for what? Go back to the scripture. Look what it says here. Look at 35. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. He's saying, if you want to follow me, you're going to have to go through suffering in this world. You're going to be opposed. You're going to look weird to people. You're going to be shamed. People are going to talk about you. They're going to look at you. They're going to ridicule you, right? And curse you as evil, like the Bible says. Luke 6, 22, 23, and they curse you because you follow the Son of Man. And you're going to die. You're going to die. It's like you're going to die. Look at this. But he says, for my sake, and my, my sake and the gospels, ask yourself, brothers, sisters, friends, are you following Jesus? And is your, and you following Jesus, is it bringing suffering in your life? Really ask yourself that. You'll be your judge today. Is it really bringing suffering in your life? How much do you talk about Jesus? How much do people mock you because you really follow the Jesus of the Bible? Right? You, you know what I, I get? I was sharing this with my family member the other day. I was like, people get mad at me because I really believe it. I really believe this. Not just some of it. I really believe it all. All of it. You know why? Because I, if I cannot believe it all, I cannot believe nothing. If there's one error, that means it's all wrong to me. You know what people say? It was written by man. Show me one error in there. Show me one. If you show me one, I will denounce my Christianity forever. 
I'll go back living to how I used to live. They still haven't shown me one to this day. Because there's no error in there. It's flawless. If we're saying that God created us, how is he not going to be able to control the people that he created? But that's just, you know what? That's just people with weak Jesus. They're weak Jesus. They're weak Jesus they can't control. I mean, excuse me. They're weak Jesus can't control them, I mean. That used to be my Jesus. My Jesus was like a gangster, I guess you would call. Like a thug, like a thug Jesus, right? Which was a demon. It wasn't Jesus. It wasn't Jesus. It wasn't the Jesus of the Bible. But I claim to be. I'm, a, I'm going to heaven. I help out people. I give to the poor. Can you imagine? I can just picture Jesus saying that. Just by you doing that, Tootie, you brought more judgment on your head. You brought more judgment on your head by you doing that. You think I need your money. I don't need nothing from you. God doesn't need nothing from us. But Jesus says, but, but if, look at this, 34. If anyone wishes to, in the middle of the verse, if anyone wishes to come after me, but he's saying, but if you do, but if you do want to follow me, you can, but it's going to take Denying yourself, picking up your cross, then follow me. Then follow me. Look at this. Let's go on. Let's go on and deny yourself. We went through the cross. Check this out. I didn't even do it justice. Look at this. Deny yourself. The next command, deny yourself. What is that? What is self-denial? What is that? Ask yourself that. What is that? Self-denial. What is it? What does it mean to you? You know what it means? Check this out. It means, that word there, deny yourself, it means disown. It means refuse. It, it means don't associate with. It means to refuse to be in companionship with. It means to separate. That's what that word means. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Separate from what? Separate from yourself. The old self. Separate from that. Look at this. Self-denial. You know one way to look at it? The self, the flesh, don't like these four things. What four things again? As we go through these, your business, what four things? They don't like to be opposed. The flesh, the self don't like to be opposed. It don't like to be shamed. It don't like to suffer. And they don't like to die. It tries to preserve life. Before you got saved, look at your life. I know, I, I know that was me. I was afraid to die. Even though I lived totally against God and that's how I was going to bring me to death. Check this out. The, old, the self that's not being denied doesn't like those four things. It doesn't like those four things. Look at this. You don't like to be opposed. You don't like to be shamed. You don't like to suffer. You don't like to die. But self-denial means that you are telling yourself, I don't care if you don't like these things. I'm telling you no. I'm denying myself. Is that you? Christian, believer, child of God, saying, is that you? Follower of Christ. Is that you? Is that us? It's like, imagine this thing. It's like this. It's like, I'm denying myself. Is that? You denying yourself. That's like you telling yourself, you know what, self? I know you don't like these four things. I know you don't like to be opposed. I know you don't like to suffer. I know you don't like to be shamed. And I know you don't like death. But you know what, self? I'm denying you today. I'm denying you. My flesh is not going to have authority over me. Is that you, believer? You know why? Look at this. You're saying no to self. You're saying no to your flesh. Look at this. Because when you say no to your flesh, you say no to yourself. You know why? Because the moment you picked up that cross 
and you put that cross on your back and you started following Jesus, that old self is gone. It's dead. That person is dead. You will have the authority in Christ Jesus to deny that self. You will have. Because you know why? You know what the old self likes? The old, okay, remember I said it, the, the flesh, the self doesn't like opposition, right? But the self likes honor. The other self doesn't like to be shamed. They don't like to be shamed of the road. They don't. So you know what they'll do? They want the approval of men. The other self don't like to suffer. So the unconverted self likes comfort. The other self will pick up the cross and choose death. And the other self will choose safety and life of this world. That's what you will do if you're unconverted. If you're unconverted, you will choose the honor, approval, comfort, and safety of this world. But if you deny yourself, you're saying, you know what, God? I want whatever it is that I got to go through to follow you. Whatever that comes with, I want that. I'm going to deny myself, and I want that. I don't want the lust of the world. I don't want the lust of the eyes and I don't want the lust of the flesh. I don't want the pride of life. I don't want to be loved by men. I don't want to be loved by people. I don't want to be loved by women. God, I'm going to deny myself and I'm going to follow you, Jesus. Can you imagine Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, coming down from heaven to be born of a virgin? To live a sinless life that you couldn't live. Can you imagine all those things what I said, the Roman cross? Whenever a criminal was going to be crucified, they beat him to a pole. Naked. Shamed. And made him carry his own cross to the place where they were, to the place where he'll ultimately die. Can you imagine Jesus came? And they did that to him. For you. For you. You know what Jesus did? He denied himself for you. He could have been like, I'm going to do that. Forget that. I'm king of kings. I'm lord of lords. I'm not going to do that for them. They dug their own hole. They can pay for it themselves. He was shamed. He was totally opposed. Total opposition. He suffered. And he died. A criminal's death for you. Can you imagine that? And then for somebody to say, I'd rather choose death than life. Why would people do that? To choose death rather than life. When he did that for you. But you know what? His death on that Roman cross was different from everybody else's. You know why? Because everybody else is still dead in the grave. Jesus isn't. Jesus rose victorious, conquering death and sin once and for all. So that you can be set free. That you don't have to go to hell for all eternity. Those wicked things that you did last night. Or you thought about last night. Or you did last week or last month. That stuff. That stuff that you wouldn't tell your wife. That stuff that you wouldn't tell your husband. That stuff you wouldn't tell your best friend. Those things. Those things. Those things that you would never tell your kids. Those things. Can you imagine that being poured on Jesus Christ? Can you imagine Jesus Christ becoming that? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Imagine everything you were. Imagine everything you've done. Can you imagine Jesus on the cross screaming out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Can you imagine God saying, because you became an adulterous, sinful addict. Can you imagine saying, whatever it is, you fill in the blank, whatever it is you were. Can you imagine that? And he's crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because you became them. Can you imagine God saying that? Because you became them. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Free gift. It's a free gift. Why wouldn't you choose it? Look at this. 
The new self will say, I want Jesus and whatever it comes with. When people oppose you and shame you, and when you go through suffering, and there will be times that the Lord calls some of his people to die as martyrs. There will be. There's martyrs dying all over the world. You just don't hear about it on the news. You know why? Because it, it, don't, it don't get a lot of ratings. You know why? It don't. It don't get a lot of ratings. People die all over the world for being a Christian. But you don't hear about that on the news. You know what you hear about? You hear about riots and how stores are getting robbed. Why don't you put on why people's heads are getting chopped off? Because you know why? That's not the road to Jesus. That's not the road to Jesus. Because if they put, this guy got chopped off for believing in, in Jesus Christ. They're like, well, that's not my Jesus. My Jesus wouldn't let me say, you know what? I'm not a Christian. And then when they leave, I can say, oh, I'm a Christian again. That's not the same Jesus of the world. You know what? They just really followed it all the way out and said, you know what? I'm not going to denounce my faith. Chop up my head to the glory of God. I know where I'm going. That has no more sting on us. Believer, look at this. So check this out. People would die as martyrs. But if you don't die a martyr, you will die to self. You will deny yourself. You will deny yourself for the sake of Jesus and the gospel until you die. If that is you, and if you have picked, if you chose to pick up your cross, that will be you all the days of your life. Not just on Wednesdays and Sundays. All the days of your life, you will deny yourself. You will say, you know what? I want to really do that, but I know that's wrong. You know, you've been there if you're a believer. But I don't want that because I know Jesus don't want that. I know what Jesus done for me. You will deny yourself. And you will pick up your cross and you will follow Jesus. You know why? Because Jesus did it. So that means follow him. What he went through, of course, you can never pay for the sins. But he said, on this earth, you will suffer for my name's sake. If you're not suffering, if you're being loved by the world, start, check your heart. Whenever you tell people about your Jesus, and, and I'm not saying this is going to happen every time, and people don't oppose you, and they always, they're always yes men. They're always yesing you up. Maybe it's because you're a friend of the world. Because the Bible says, if you want to make yourself a friend of the world, James 4, 4. If you want to make yourself a friend of the road, you make yourself an enemy of God. He says, if you want to be a friend of the road, you make yourself an enemy of God. Can you imagine that being an enemy of God? You don't have to be though, but can you imagine that? And that's the majority of the world. Look at this. Now hang in there with me. Look at this. 35. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. But look at here. So we're saying here that save equals lose and lose equals save. Because it says if you want to save your life, you got to lose your life then. But if you save your life, you're going to lose your life. So we're saying save equals lose and lose equals save. So check this out. People that want to save their life from opposition, from shame, from suffering, from death, will lose it. They will lose their life. If you don't want to be opposed, if you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to go through suffering, you don't want to be shamed, you don't want to die to yourself, you will lose your life. You will lose it for all eternity. Look at this. And the people that want to save their life, that person chose. I'd rather have honor of people. I'd rather have approval of people. Look at this. I'd rather have the comfort of the world. And I'd rather have the safety that I got here on this earth. Can you imagine that? How old do you think you're going to live to? Do you really think you're going to live to 100 years old? Praise God if you do. Do you really think you're going to live that old? Nobody in this room that I'm talking to today, in 100 years, none of you will be in here no more. None of you, not even my babies in the back. In less than 100 years, so let's just start there. In less than 100 years, you will be 
in eternity. Imagine that. You will be in eternity. You'll be in forever. For less than 100 years? Some people will give up. Not being shamed. Not suffering. Not being opposed. And dying, denying, dying to themselves. For less than 100 years. They'll give up eternity. Can you imagine days without number like I was telling my daughter Melina? Can you imagine after a gazillion years? It's just like it just begun. Can you imagine a quadrillion years times a quadrillion? And it's just like it just begun, like the first second. Can you imagine that? For all eternity, for whatever it is you're doing, if you do not repent and turn to Jesus Christ, you will undergo the wrath of God for all eternity. Not because God is hateful, because God is just and God is fair. So God is just and fair and loving. He has to hate what's not of him. He has to hate what's evil. And if you don't repent and turn to God, that means you're evil. That means you chose all those other things. Why? Why? Why would you choose death? Why would you choose death? That was me. Years back, I was choosing the approval of men. I wanted to be loved by the world. I was choosing. I want to be honored. I was choosing. I want to have the comfort of the world. I want safety. I don't want to die. But I was losing eternally. I was going to lose it eternally. But the moment you pick up your cross and you die to self, you have gained your life. Forever. What happened to Jesus on that cross? He died. Jesus said, now you pick up your cross and follow me. Follow me. You want life? Follow me. Die to self. Say no to all the things that your friends are telling you to say yes to. Please don't end up in hell because you're friends. The majority of the world will end up in hell because their friends told them about this fake Jesus. Don't end up in hell because of your friends. Who is he in your life today? Who is he in your life today? Look at this. The old self must be denied. So once you pick up the cross, the old self dies. Look at this. The old self must be denied. That means there is a new self that will be willing to take up the cross. And the old self will be denied. Galatians 2.20. Check this out. Go to Galatians 2 real quick. Now hang in there with me. Look at this. Galatians 2.20. If you don't want to go there, you can just hear it. Galatians 2.20. Look what the Lord Jesus says here through Apostle Paul. Look at this. I love it how this NLT one says it. Galatians 2.20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Is that you? Is that you today? That in this earthly body, you're trusting in the one that died for you and arose for you. And it's no, it's no longer who you live, but Christ lives in you. Is that you? Who is he today in your life? Who is he today in your life? Does he live in you? Because if he lives in you, he's your master. He will control everything about you. They'll know you by the way that you love. Your enemies, do you pray for them? The people that slander you, that's dying itself. The enemies, your enemies, they shouldn't be enemies. They should be, like we say, frenemies, right? They should be your friends. Do you pray for them? You know what the Bible says? Don't just pray for them. Love them. Don't just love them. Pray that they're blessed. Can you imagine that? 
Jesus says that. He says, just don't love them. Pray that your enemies are blessed. Do you do that? That's dying to self. The people that slander you? Do you pray for them? Do you love them? Do you pray that God would save them? The people that hurt you and cause you suffering? Do you pray that they're blessed and do you love them? Do you want them to be saved? And if so, how much do you pray for them? Ask yourself this. Have you ever missed a meal for them? I'm not even saying like, have you ever did a full day fast? I'm saying, have you missed one meal? One meal for them. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. One meal. Have you missed one meal? Praying and fasting for so that God would save that person because that was you. That was you. And some of us can't even give up a sandwich for their soul so that God would hear your prayer and save their soul from the pits of hell. I tell you, somebody was praying and fasting for me, man. Man, that breaks me because that was me. And when they threaten you with death, do you pray for them that they can have life? Is that you? When this world threatens you with the death of this world, it doesn't end here. It don't end here. It does not end here. We're just passing through. We're just passing by. We're all going to end up somewhere in eternity. Two places. And they're very real. They're so real that Jesus talks about them. So real. He talks, to, he talks about hell more than, more than he does about heaven. Will you be honored in heaven by the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you hear those words, well done, well done, my good and faithful servant? Can you imagine? Do you pray for your enemies? Do you pray for your lost loved ones? Do you really want them to be saved? Do you really want them to know Jesus like you know Jesus? Or do, you, do they know the Jesus that you have already because it's really not Jesus? And they're comfortable in doing what they're, what they're doing. Is that you? That used to be me. Talking with my friends while I was doing drugs, serving them drugs, giving them poison. You know what about me? You don't have to look, you don't have to look far to find dirt on me. I served poison for years. You know what I gotta live with? Not knowing how much of my mess had hurt people, maybe even killed people that I don't even know. And God forgave me. God forgive me. He can forgive you. He, 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 many of you are forgiven here. But do you live that way? The same stuff that we love to do, that we used to love to do, that's very enjoyable, that's very cool, that everybody loves you, kills people. It does, it's true. People say, why are you being so hard to it? What do you mean? It's true. Nobody says it. Trish called again. It's true. One day, my wife took me to church. My brother Jay, my sister Leanne, I'll never forget as long as I live. I went there because I was hearing things. Not because I was all drugged up. I was just hearing things. I was very demonic, and I didn't know it. And I'm getting on topic, but this is good. Check this out. My wife took me to church one day, and my wife was lost. Even God used my lost wife to take me to church. By the grace of God, my wife is saved now. And a pastor got up there. I don't even know if I should call him a pastor. Got up there. The enemy used him as a son that I held on for so many years and almost got me in hell. He said, you don't have to come to church to be saved. You don't have to be saved. You just got to know that Jesus is the Lord and Savior. No way. After that day, every time my wife tried to get me to go to church, you know what I did to make myself feel good? Baby, don't go to church today. Don't take my daughter to church today. Baby, if we don't go today and we chill out today, I'll go with you next week. Next week would come and I wouldn't go. I said, babe, let's do this and let's do this. If you want to go to town, I'll buy you this. So I wouldn't feel guilty. Till when I heard that man say that. Then you know what I did after that? I didn't have to go waste some money. I didn't have to write my wife. You know what I said? Babe, you heard the pastor. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to go to church. He said it himself. 
I was putting my faith and trust in that man and what he said. And it almost ended me up in hell. By the grace of God, he showed me who he was, just like he showed Peter. He was like, blessed are you, Simon of Barjona. Flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, my father in heaven did. Don't go by what I'm saying. Go by what this word of God says. Go and test it like a Berean. In the Bible, the Bereans, they tested what Paul was saying. Is he saying the right things? They searched the scripture for days. Go test it. You know why? If what I'm saying to you is wrong, I'll be judged by it. That falls on me. If what I'm saying to you is wrong, don't even trip about everything I said. You're good. Don't even stress about it. Go and keep doing it if I'm wrong. But if what I'm saying is right, and this is right, and this is right, not coming from one, coming from two, if this is right, and if you're not right with God, then you got a lot of things to think about. you got a lot of things to worry about. You do. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. I want you to repent and choose life. Because I don't want to be ashamed of what I did. I've been doing things behind doors that my friends don't know. I don't been doing things behind doors that my Christian brothers and sisters don't know what I'm doing. What do you mean? Why are you hiding it from them? God sees it. Like I say, it's an open scandal in heaven. As long as my brothers and sisters don't know, what do you mean? God saw it. Repent and call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What if this is your last chance? What if this is your last chance? If you're not right. And if you are right, brother, sister, friend, this should give you great joy. That means you have picked up your cross. That means you have denied yourself. That means you are following Jesus. Look at this. Look at this. Man. Thank you, Jesus. Look at this. 36. We're going to roll through these. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit it? So say you gained the whole world and everything in it. Say you gained it. Look at it. 37. For will, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Check this out. Say you gained the whole world. What would you give for exchange for your soul? How much is it worth to you? How much is your soul worth to you today? You ask yourself that. What would you give in exchange for your soul? What would you give? You can't give nothing. You know why? You can't buy a soul out of hell. You can't give nothing. You can't buy a soul out of hell. Look at this. What would you, what would it, 37, for what will it, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Why would you gain the whole world and lose your soul? For sex? Drunkenness? Being cool? For your little idols? Why would you forfeit your soul? Look at this. 38. Top on 37 again. Look at this. We're almost done. For what would a man give in exchange for his soul to gain the whole world and lose your soul. Look at all these movie stars. They thought the same thing. They thought, you know what, I'm going to get rich and live lavishly and I'll be happy then. Look how broken they are. Look how broken they are. All the cars they want, all the women they want, all the men they want, right? All the money they want and they can't buy happiness. You know why? Because they don't want to deny themselves. They don't want to pick up their cross. They don't want to follow Jesus. They want to, you know what? I'll be wise in my own eyes and I'll do it this way. And I'll just slide into the cracks of heaven. Let me tell you right now, heaven don't have no cracks. You ain't sliding in. You ain't going to slide in. But believer saint, as this is cutting the unbeliever and this is cutting the believer, just know in your heart, in your heart of hearts, believer, that if you have picked up your cross, you will see those things in your life. You will see those characteristics. You will see that you will choose opposition instead of honor. That you will choose to be shamed instead of approval. You will choose suffering instead of comfort. You will choose death instead of safety. And you won't just choose it just to choose it. You will choose it. Why? Look at 35 in the middle of 30, at the end of 35. 
for my sake and the gospels, you will save it. Is that you? Is that you, brothers and sisters in Christ? Is that you will save what? You will save your life if you give it up for my sake and the gospels. How is your mouth glorifying God because of God? Like my brother says, if God is Lord over your life, he should be Lord over your mouth. If God is Lord over your life, he should be Lord over your mouth and what comes out of it. Is that him? How much do you talk about Jesus? How much do you share Jesus? How much do you share his gospel? Because he says, for my, not, not, not me. He says, for my sake and the gospels. If you have picked up your cross and you're following Jesus and you've denied yourself, how are you being used as a vessel to spread the gospel? Or are you being used as a vessel for the devil to spread his heresy, to spread his demonic stuff? There's either one or the other. How are you being used? Who are you being used by? Either God or the devil. Do you know how hard it is to get up here and say these hard things? To know that the majority of the world is not going to love me? But I care for every one of y'all's souls. I don't care what people think of me. I didn't care when I was lost. You know what? I did care. Forgive me. I take that back. I did care. I was a lover. I wanted to be praised by the road. I did. And I take that back. I repent for that. Yeah. Because I didn't deny myself. I just take, I just hit me right now. But what I'm saying. But you know what? I don't care at the end of the day. Because I know God's happy. Because he said it. Not me. I'm blaming it on God. Like I said, it's not like God's like, nah, uh I didn't say that to you. You just went too deep in, man. You went crazy with it, Judy. No, I, God said it. I'm blaming it on God. And I, we know God is not wrong. Look at this. Look at this right here. For what would it, 37, for what would it, what will a man give in exchange for soul 38? Look right here. I do wrap up in the name of Jesus. Look at this. For whoever is ashamed of me, and my words in this adulterous, what he says here, in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. God says, you know what? You're ashamed of me here before man? You know why you were ashamed of me here? Because you didn't deny yourself. You didn't pick up your cross and you didn't follow me. You wanted to be approved. You wanted the honor of the road. You wanted the comfort. You wanted the safety, and you got it here in this world. But now, my father and the holy angels, I don't know you depart from me, for I never knew you. He, that's not my words. He says, I will be ashamed of you. Check this out. You know why? Look at this right here. This is the key right here. They wanted to be loved. The people that won't deny themselves. Look right here, 38. They wanted to be loved by what? Jesus called them. Look at this. Adulterous. And sinful generation. They wanted to be loved by adulterous and sinful people instead of be loved by God. It says it right there. In this adulterous, sinful generation. How messed up is that? How messed up is this world? That people want to be loved by adulterous and sinful people instead of loved, to be loved by the one and only true and sinless God? That can forgive you for everything you've ever done. Imagine everything you've ever done. Forgiven. Wiped away. Clean. For all eternity. Can you imagine here one on this? Can you imagine here I like using this? Can you imagine when you get to the judgment seat of God? And you know, check this out. And you go in there. It's like courts are ready. Ready. It's just waiting for you. You walk in there. God Almighty on his throne. You walk in there. And as you walk in there, Satan, the accuser, walks up in there too. He has all this paperwork up on you, right? And he says, look at, you can't forgive her. You can't forgive him. Look at all this. I did this. I was there with him. I was there. I'm the one that tempted her. I'm the one that tempted him to do this. Remember that year? Whenever he did this and she did that, I was there. I was there, Lord. Remember all this? Look at, I got two pages of that, Lord. I was there. I was there. Look at all these years and years. You kicked me out of heaven. Because I sinned against you. You can't let him in. You're a holy and righteous God. You can't let him in. Can you imagine? Boom. Like they, like they say, the door will pop and open. And boom, the son of man comes in. And says, 
I rebuke you, wicked devil. I rebuke you, wicked devil. Check your paperwork. And they go through and it's just all blank sheets. All gone. All gone. Everything you've ever done, all gone. Because he paid for it. All gone. The most wickedest thing you've ever done. Never never we brought up again. Separate as far as the east is from the west. All gone. All the sins you committed against God. All gone forever. God said, can you imagine God saying, you wicked devil, check your paper. I paid for them. They're all blank. They're all blank. Get out of here, you wicked devil. He's mine. She's mine. Enter the kingdom of heaven. My good and faithful servant. Enter into the rest of your master. You denied yourself. You suffered for me. You were shamed for me. And you died for me and for my sake and the gospels. Thank you, my willing vessel, that I used you all the days of your life to share the gospel with all these people. Can you imagine when you get to heaven and God's saying, look at here. I used you to share the gospel with this person. Look at he's here now. Can you imagine when you get to heaven and that person coming up to you, like we said before, and telling you, the only reason I'm here is because God used you. To tell me about Jesus that one day, and I never forgot it. That one day when you gave me that card, I used you. My life changed. I've never been the same, and that's why I'm here, and thank you. Can you imagine saying, I don't even want it. I just want to throw my, my crown at the feet of my king. That can be you. If that ain't you, repent and call on the name of the Lord. He's coming with power and great glory and wrath. You could be forgiven for all you've done. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't. But don't let your click come. Every one of us, every one of us is waiting for one of those. And one day one's going to be yours. And one day he's going to be mine. What are you going to say when your click is up? Somebody's walking into eternity every time. Every click, somebody just entered eternity forever. What will yours be? Let's end with that. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father. Almighty King Jesus, Father God, by the powerful, holy, and righteous name of your Son, Jesus, Father God, we never want to be ashamed of you. Forgive us where we fail. You lead us, direct us, and guide us in the way of all that word is truth, Father God. Have your word go forth that will never return back void. Who cares what this world says, Father God? This world will hate us even when they say they love us. Father God, have your way with us, Father God. Use us for your sake and the sake of the gospel, Father God, to spread the gospel for the salvation of many souls. Through you, working through us to do what pleases you. Have your way, King Jesus. Move when he's moving, keep when he's to be kept. We ask all these things in your son's precious, holy, and righteous name. The son of man that died for our sins and rose from death on the third day. Never to die again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.